Turn with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 29. I believe the Lord wants to help everyone here this morning. I believe that the message this morning will be a blessing if you'll grab on to it. Amen. God has good things for you. Amen. I know the singing is good. It makes us feel good. The handshaking is good. It makes us connect with other people. Uh, the testimony is a great year of what God's doing. But I believe all that just sets a platform for the Word of God. Amen. Because God will allow His Word this morning to take place in your heart and that will be able to provide for you uh, a position that only God can give you in your life. And uh, if you give me a few minutes to lay some foundation, I believe that the Lord will help us to be able to bring some truths out that will be a blessing to you in your walk with the Lord. The Bible says, And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. Wow. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for the days are fulfilled that I may go into her. Laban gathered uh, together all the men of the place, made a feast, and it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought him to, uh, and brought her to him, and he went into her. Jumping on down, it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah, and he said to Laban. Is this thou, what is this that thou hast done to me? Did I not serve, did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then uh, hast thou beguiled me? Wow. 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 If you don't understand what I'm talking about, I'll, I'll give you all the details of what's happening. One of the most baffling stories in the Word of God, I truly believe. Amen. When we look at the story of Jacob, who worked, and, and, and don't lose out with me, you got to understand we're back in the book of Genesis. We'll understand more about that when we get to the foundation series. But here he is serving his uncle Laban for his daughter Rachel. And uh, uh, he earned the right to marry her. He kept his end of the deal for the beautiful Rachel. And after the couple's first night together, Jacob woke up and he reached for the beautiful young lady, uh, Rachel, who he desired to marry, laying beside the bed. But instead of his beloved Rachel, it was Leah. Wow. It was her weak-eyed older sister whom he had married. He had married the wrong lady. Wow. <laughs> Are y'all feeling what I'm feeling? Like I'm feeling sorry for this fellow. I feel. Do you feel, brother? <laughs> hey, he worked seven years. Not enough for him. The Bible says it was as the, if days, Brother Josh, he had worked for this woman. And uh, kind of unheard of. But maybe it was somewhere tucked in the agreement that was unspoken, Brother David, that Laban had somehow thought that in uh, Paranadam there was a law that said that the older sister had to be married before any of the younger sisters could be married. Maybe he didn't share that with Jacob. Jacob never heard about it, but he is dumbfounded. He is very, very angry. He has married the wrong girl. I can very much think, wow, I would not want that to happen to me. You know, you're bargaining for one thing and you get another. And so, let me ask you, what can we learn from Jacob's experience? I mean, the Old Testament is full of all types of types and shadows of things that we can make applicable for our lives today. You know, should it be that uh, all grooms... Before you get married, lift the veil and look at the face of the lady underneath the veil to make sure it's the right one. I mean, I think there's something a lot deeper than that that we can, we can look at uh, this morning. I think the lesson is really a lot more subtle than we can 
than we can imagine. Uh, working for Laban to get Rachel and waking up with Leah. In the morning, it's Leah. The concept that we can learn from. I, I think that really we have to, if we want to understand the whole story, go way, way back to a land of Canaan. Let me bear and give you some uh, foundation that we can get to where we need to go this morning. But if you look at the life of Jacob, and I know that over the past couple weeks I have focused on him at the times, and I don't want to be belaboring to the subject, but for those that may not be familiar with what's happening here in the Old Testament, let me lay some, some groundwork that they can understand, and also to refresh it to you. But uh, uh, as, as we go back uh, to the land of Canaan, you'll find that the custom uh, in Canaan's, uh, Canaan, where Jacob came from, his people, is that the first son would receive the birthright and would have special blessings from his father uh, when his father would, would die. And so this was a big deal. And you find that Jacob and Esau were twins. However, Esau was older than Jacob. And even though they were twins, brother Eli, Esau gets the, bless, the birthright and the blessing. And so here it comes, uh, the Bible says that Esau was a profane man in Hebrews 12, 16. Uh, he despised his birthright. And uh, uh, here it was that, that one time Esau, uh, Caleb, he was so hungry that he sold his birthright to his brother for, for a, a, a bowl of a, 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 a pottage of lentils of beans because he, he, he really, Brother Walt, didn't take it seriously. He probably thought, I can sell my birthright, Sister Tina, but I know I'm still going to get the blessing because I'm still the oldest even if I sell it. So he, he probably thought that in his mind. And so here comes a time, Brother David, when these twins are about 40 years old and their daddy is getting older and uh, it's difficult for him to be able to see and so uh, Jacob and Esau, their dad Isaac, and, 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 and their mother uh, Rebecca, uh, we find that here this family of four is. And so Rebecca, she loves Jacob. And so uh, uh, their father uh, Isaac is about to bless, uh, give the blessing. And so he says to his son Esau, he says, Esau, why don't you go out and why don't you kill a deer for me and come back and make me some stuff. And once I eat of the stew, I will give a blessing over top of you. So here he is. He's grabbing all this hunting equipment. And, 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 and Sister Alice, he's going out. And uh, Eugene, he, he's going to go hunting. And in the meantime, Rebecca grabs her son, Jacob. And he said, uh, she says, hey, let's, let's get the blessing upon you. Here, I'll kill a goat. I'll spice the soup up. And we'll strap some goat's hair onto you. We'll go grab your brother's clothing so you smell like an outdoorsman. And we'll bring you into your father. He can't see anyway. He don't have glasses. He'll only see your shadow. He'll feel your arms. He'll smell you. And he'll give the blessing over top of you. We know that that's what's executed, that's what's done. And we know that the goat is killed, and, and, and Rebecca makes, uh, makes a, 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 a the, the stew tastes so good, and, and uh, she ties some goat's hair on his neck. Uh, Esau, he's a hairy fella, not on his arms. Man, can you imagine that? Uh, tying that on, and, and it smells good. So he, he brings this bowl of steaming soup into his daddy, Isaac, and he says to him, the dad, voice is a little higher uh, than his brother who has a deeper, gruffer, gruffer voice. And, 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 and Isaac's thinking, man, that voice sure did kill that deer off fast and get that soup, but come here, son, let me smell you. It smells like he saw. Come here, son, let me feel the back of your neck. And he feels it. Well, it feels like, let me feel your arm. Well, it has to be Esau. Uh, my, my eyes are bad, but I know his scent anywhere. He smells like the woods. I can feel. He's a hairy fella. I feel him. And, 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 and that is definitely, I'm hungry. Bring me that stew. And so he begins to eat that stew. And, and uh, I, I never tasted goat before. I don't know how much it tastes like deer, but uh, Rebecca knew how to make it taste just right. Amen. That even passed the taste buds of, of Isaac. And so he finishes his stew. And then he gives a blessing over top of Jacob. Rebecca and Jacob are feeling real good. They feel like they won. However, Esau comes home. 
And Brother Josh, he has with him venison, and he makes a stew, and he brings it in to eat some. That and here I am. That, I killed a deer. That, this is the best stew I've made in a long time. What? You were just here. <laughs> Maybe Esau's like, Dad, you're getting pretty forgetful. What is going on with you? You know, he's up in age. I know uh, uh, Esau probably says, I'm 40 now, and Daddy's even older, and, uh, 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 you, you know, just a little worried about Dad. You know, uh, you know, is he getting a little forgetful? Uh, what's going on, Dad? And so uh, the story is played out, and Esau is given the news of what his brother has done to him, Jacob. And you can just imagine how angry Esau is. I mean, he's a warrior, and, and there's killing in him to begin with. He, he has shown violence in his life. And you can imagine as he gets mad, maybe he's sobbing, and he says, listen, it's one thing my brother has tricked me out of, uh, out of, my, uh, out of my birthright, and now he's deceived and got my blood. Well, that Jacob, uh, and he hears the wailing and the sobs and the angriness that's in his brother's voice, and maybe he's shaking in his boots outside, and he so finally says, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm And he thinks, I'm not going to say it. I'll wait till daddy dies, but I'm going to kill him. He'll get what's coming to him. He'll get what's his. And so all of a sudden, Rebecca's outside. She's realizing what a mess she has created in her own family. And she looks at her son, uh, Jacob, and she says, Son, I, I, your brother's going to kill you. And so the best thing for you to do is head to my brother Laban in Haran. I want you to go down there. Your brother won't be able to find you. I need you to be protected. I need you to be safe. And so Jacob, he travels from, uh, 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 from Beersheba, and he makes his way down to Haran. And it is a long journey. He's traveling uh, by, by the Dead Seas. Uh, he's traveling by the Euphrates River. He finally, Brother Dennis, makes his way to Haran. He don't know where Uncle Laban lives. He doesn't know it all, but he sees a group of uh, 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 shepherds, and they're taking care of their sheep. And, and he notices that there's a well, Sister Dietrich, and those men pull together, and they pull the stone off of the well, and they take care of water and the sheep. And, and so he introduces himself, and the shepherds go by, take him in, and, and, and talk to him. And, him and, and he says, listen, I've come to find my uncle, uh, uncle Laban. And they say, I know where your Uncle Laban lives. We know him. We'll take you where he lives, Brother Eli. And, and while they're there talking, all of a sudden they see a big flock of sheep and a beautiful young lady leading. And the shepherds say, wow, Jacob, today is your lucky day. Because there is Laban's daughter. There is Laban's daughter. And it, her name is Rachel. And all of a sudden, Jacob looks upon Rachel and he says, I have never seen a more beautiful woman in all my life. So Josh, he's out to impress now. It's not even time for sheep to be watered, Brother David. But all of a sudden, here it is. Jacob said, I'm going to show her who I am. She's going to notice me because I've noticed her. And, and, and so Sister Gretchen, he says, I, I'm going to go over and talk to her. He says, hi, Rachel. Uh, you want to water your sheep? Come on over. I'll pull the stone off the well. And so there he is. He pulls the stone off all by himself. And, 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 and he takes care of the sheep. And he introduces himself. He says, I'm, I'm now, days are different than today. They didn't marry their cousins in those days. Don't lose out with the Word of God. Amen. Life is a whole lot different than it is here in our day and age. And so uh, uh, Rachel says, well, I'll take you home to Daddy. And so he walks in the house and, and, and in the tent. And let, let, me, let me bring it to modern day terminology. He walks in the tent. It's beautiful. It's nice. And all of a sudden, uh, Laban introduces uh, uh, Rachel's older sister, Leah. And he looks at her. And her eyes just tell a story themselves. They are weak and nice. <laughs> they are... Uh, uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, a little frumpy. They're not as vibrant. I mean, when he saw Rachel, I mean, her eyes just are full of light. And the glitter of her smile won his heart. But he looks at Leah and it's almost like, are you sure you two are sisters? You sure? 
Yes, this is my sister. And so it was that during this whole time that they're there, that Leah just thinks that Jacob is the best thing ever since sliced bread. And there wasn't even sliced bread back then. So here it is, Lee is trying to win the heart of Jacob, and he's not interested at all. He's already looked at Rachel, and she is perfect in every way, and his heart, his heart is drawn to her. In fact, he decides that he wants to marry her. How, what do you think about that? I mean, just in a few moments, don't raise your hands. Okay, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But how many of you, from the gentlemen out there, you saw your wife the first time, and you're like, I want to marry that girl. You know, you, you maybe you may have thought that. You know, I, I I remember my story. First time I saw my wife, I was like, wow. You know, uh, I didn't know, but 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 I was impressed. And, 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 and you know, that's how it is. And so he was impressed. That feeling that that is just so uh, uh, pushing him, driving him. He is falling head over heels. He wants to marry her. And so he says to his uncle Laban, he says, Uncle Laban, I can't talk to you. I'd like to marry Rachel. And uh, Laban said, listen, Jacob, you don't have any land, you don't have any money. I mean, uh, let's talk here. What is the diary that you're going to give me for her? You know, things just don't come free in life. And so he said, okay, I'll make a deal with you. If you work for me for seven years, I will give to you my daughter's hand in marriage. Amen. Uh, you know, it, it, it's crazy. The Bible says that the seven years pass by. It's amazing when you're working for something how quickly it goes. And so it went really quickly for Jacob. The, 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 the years passed, the Bible says, as days. And, and this is very strange to us in our Western world. But, but on the night of their wedding, Laban calls all the men together and they begin to celebrate. And the women aren't invited. The children aren't invited. It's just the men. And it's the way they did. The Word of God says. And so here it is. They're celebrating until the sun goes down beyond the horizon. And all of a sudden, there's a heavy veiled girl that begins to come into the room. And so there it is. Jacob has been waiting for this moment, daydreaming, wishing, working, I mean, for this moment. And so uh, there they are. Their wedding night transpires. And uh, so uh, he wakes up in the light of day. Amen. And he looks and, ah, I married the wrong woman. It's not Rachel. It's Leah. Can you imagine that? He jumps out of bed like he's been stung by a bee. And he clothes himself quickly. And he runs out of the stick. And he goes and he finds, uh, uh, maybe, maybe at first, maybe he blames Leah. He's mad at Leah. Maybe they're arguing. Maybe they're fighting. I don't know how the scenario goes. But he's very upset. And then he goes and he finds Laban. He says, what have you done to me? He doesn't like it. Who would? He's been deceived. He's been tricked. Maybe he should have thought about his life a little bit, but in that moment, he didn't think about that. His trickery, his deceit, what he did to his father, what he did to his brother. And, and, and Laban says, Oh, did I forget to tell you about our custom here in Haran? The oldest daughter has to be married. First of all, I just assumed that you knew that you had to marry the oldest daughter, and then you would get the youngest daughter a little bit later. No, you forgot to tell me that, Laban. And he's mad. He said, Listen. Listen, I'm only asking to stay with her another week. Remember how you said seven years was like days, like a week? So give me another week or seven years. Just spend that boy and then I will give you the answer. So Jacob snorted, I've got to work another seven years. Laban, are you serious? Are you serious? Laban said, listen, Leah will be a great wife for you. I know she'll be a good wife for you. And so we know what transpires. He works another seven years. Here it is that Leah is working very hard. Now bear with me. I'm going to bring things. I see the time. Just bear with me. I have some things I want to share that will help you. Leah works very hard. She looks very hard to be a good wife, to get the love of Jacob. She loves him. She loves him. Leah does everything that Rachel is wanting her to do. I mean, she becomes a taskmaster. I mean, she's working hard. She's treated inappropriately. Uh, you, 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 
here it is that, that uh, we find that they're married. And, and so Aaliyah, she, she's able to conceive and bear children for, for, for Jacob, but, but Rachel is not. And so uh, we find that soon before you know it, a fourth son is born, and, 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 and a fifth son, and a sixth son. And, 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 and so here it is that every time Leah is probably hoping that after she births a child, that she'll win the heart of Jacob, but it never really ever happens. She's doing everything she knows to do. She's giving to him. She's loving him. She's being faithful to him. She looks at him, and though her eyes may not have the vibrance of her sister, uh, uh, Rachel, she still loves him so much and is working so hard for him. She, she longed for just one time for Jacob's eyes to lay upon her the way that it does Rachel, but it never happens even though she's working hard. <coughs> because you see, Jacob, he looks at Leah and he thinks that all my dreams are wasted, all my plans are wasted, all my work is wasted. All my expectations are wasted. We all have leaders in our life. Listen, are you listening to me this morning? We bargain for the dreams. We bargain for the spectacular. We bargain for the good stuff. And when we work very, very hard for it, and we find out that instead of getting the Rachels of our life, we wind up with the Leahs of our life. Hey, listen, folks. Everyone in here can agree with me of what that is like. You're aiming for the stars. Amen. You're aiming high. But somewhere in the middle of it, you did not get what you bargained for. And it is disappointing. Every one of us in our life goes through that. Amen. We, we find that it's easy to love the Rachels. Our hearts leap for the Rachels. Amen. We love the, the efforts that we have because we know that we're going to get rewarded with Rachel. Amen. And all of a sudden, we look and here is Leah. She represents our disappointments. She represents our, our, our pain, our broken hearts. And, and we feel like all of our efforts have been wasted because we wanted Rachel and we got Leah. You ever feel that way in life? Everything that you work for, you want it. And, 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 and well, we just thought that Rachel was coming, but we get the weak eyed Leah. Every dream, every plan, every promise. Amen. It's shipwrecked on the rocks of, 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 of deception. But, you know, you see, uh, Leah. Uh, in our lives could represent some things that we've gone through where maybe it's a, a, a bad relationships or betrayal or economic reverses or, or the results of bad decisions and bad choices. And we wind up with the Leahs of our life. We thought we were marrying Rachel and all of a sudden we wake up one morning and we're in bed with Leah. All the things we want. Our finances, our health, maybe our relationships that aren't what we dream them to be. All these things. God, I didn't part from this. You know, I worked hard. I worked hard for Rachel. And I got stuck with you. You've got to be kidding me. How can this possibly happen? It's a setup to trick Satan. See, he hides lots of things behind the veil, doesn't he? The enemy will tell you that there's peace and there's victory and there's answers behind a lot of things that are hid behind a veil. And he tricks us. He's been doing that since day number one. But I need to tell you that the Word of God is so faithful in reminding us that what the enemy meant for our harm, God uses for our good. Amen. I don't want to get ahead of myself. And so here it is underneath the veil, all, all the, the promises. Uh, uh, you know, we're intoxicated with something beautiful. And, and in the morning, it's heartache. It's, just, it's shattered dreams. It's life's problems. It's disappointments. Amen. And, and it's something that was uninvited, but it just doesn't go away. We are now stuck with it. Uh, but, but look, uh, there, there's a ray of hope. The reality is that Leah gave six sons to Jacob. And Rachel gave two. The two was the much loved Joseph. We know his story, don't we? And the other one is Benjamin, who we know that uh, 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 
that uh, was the son of Jacob in his old age. But can I say this? When I look at the sons of Leah that was birthed, one of the sons that she birthed was the name of Judah. Now there's a couple things about Judah. He's the son of praise, worship, and praise. Listen to me. Don't lose. I, 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 uh, don't be caught watching on me. Forget about it. Give me a few moments. Leah birthed Judah, the son of praise. Can I look at my own life? I'm not going to point fingers and point things out about yours. I don't know, but I know mine. If I look at my life and I see all my Leah's, I see all my disappointments, I see hurt, I see pain, I see dreams that have been aborted, I see broken hearts, I see time that I've wasted, I see frustration, I, I, I see the, the, the shattered expectations, I see the, the cancellation of plans, I see empty promises, false hope, I see trickery, I see betrayal, I see lies, I see weariness, I, I sometimes look and see disgust because there are things that, that I thought I was getting that were Rachel's and they turned out to be Leah's. But one thing that I realized that Leah exposed my weakness and Leah exposed my broken heart. Amen. And it was because of Leah, Sister Tina, it drew me closer to God. Can I tell you that it will be the Leah's in your life that will draw you closer to God? You may say, but I didn't bargain for Leah and I didn't work for Leah and Leah's not what I wanted to wed. Listen, don't despise your Leah's because she'll birth things in your life that will bring praise and worship to God. Amen. It was through that lineage, amen, that the, the, the Messiah would be born, Jesus. It is through the Leah's of our life that it will birth Jesus Christ and sing the face of Jesus even better. Don't despise Leah because God has allowed those Leahs in your life, amen, to birth things that could never ever happen. And Rachel, thank God for Leah. You see, when I look at, at, at Rachel, amen, you may dream about a Rachel in the night, but when you wake up in the morning, you find that you only have Leah, amen. It is those Leahs that will help us. It will bring us closer to Jesus than our Rachels ever will. Look at the woman with the issue of blood, 12 young, long years. She tried everything else, but in the long years of Leah, she met Jesus. Think about the woman. She only had one son and he died. The funeral. But it was in the Leah, amen, that she met Jesus. Amen. Can you think about that uh, man who was a paralytic? And there he was by the pool for 38 years. But it was in the Leah of his 38 years that he met Jesus. Amen. Thank God for Leah. We think about the disciples. Amen. Uh -huh, and the boat. Amen. It was in the Leah that they met Jesus. Amen. Think about the woman at the well. Amen. She's been married five times and now she lives in disgrace with someone else. Amen. But in the Leah's of her life, she met Jesus at the well. Thank God for Leah. See, we begin to understand that our perception of Leah changes just as Jacob's perception of Leah changed. See, Leah was faithful and Leah longed for a relationship with Jacob. And we find that she's dependable. What he thought was once cleanness was her just cleaving to him because she wanted a relationship. And the Spirit of God's coming into your heart is not cleanliness. That God wants a relationship with you. Rachel, she flew off the handle, but Leah, she was calm and steady and even-tempered. Rachel, she was a taker, but Leah, she was a giver. Leah was calm and resigned, but Rachel was the opposite. Leah was a managerial of the things of her home, where, uh, or Leah was managerial of the things of her home, cooking skills at far outranked Rachel's. See, when Jacob looked, he finds a conflict in the home never came from Leah, but 
that came from our church. Thank God for the leaders of our home. Most importantly, Leah was the mother of Judah, the son of praise. And as Jacob lay on his deathbed, he gave prophecy 